Hello, hello. Welcome everybody to the Pyramid Science Foundation's live stream. We have an amazing guest with you today, but I'm gonna hand it over to Charlie as a little bit of an announcement today. Okay, and then I'll then I'll turn it back to Lisa to introduce uh, our guest today. But uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. I, I just posted this morning uh, the interview I did about 10 days ago with Sarah Westall that's now on the Pyramid Science Foundation uh, YouTube page. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I've also got another um, research video on uh, universal phi scaling in technology. Uh, that's going to go out to our Luminary Club first. And uh, then about uh, two days from now, we'll, we'll publish that on YouTube and Rumble as well. Um, and just as a reminder, um, uh, for those of you who would like to support the Foundation's efforts, uh, our new Luminary Club is available. It costs $44 to, uh, to join. We're putting all of our videos, uh, special like research videos up uh, ahead of time for Luminary Club members. And we have other benefits as well. But uh, check that out on the pyramidsciencefoundation.org website. And uh, we, would, we appreciate everybody who would support the foundation by joining as a luminary. And then lastly, I want to just point out uh, Lisa has, uh, is, is, has many, many talents, but she's just taken on a, a really big job uh, with Lewis Herms and uh, Screw Big Gov. She's now the producer of their uh, daily uh, news program, uh, which is called SBG News and Views. I've watched the first two episodes of it, and um, it's getting better every day. And I can't wait to watch the one this afternoon. But that's that's on um, uh, Rumble. I, I guess it's in many other places, Lisa, as well, at 5 p.m. every day. And uh, it's a great thing to, um, uh, to to look forward to every day. Uh, he's Lewis is, and Lisa is doing a great job as a producer. And that's the whole key for bringing this up. But uh, and then one final plug, um, uh, you know, Lewis's team has put together a video uh, on uh, trafficking, and uh, I, uh, I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but I remembered about it uh, from uh, watching the two uh, news and views. It's called watchcages.com is where you can see the movie. The movie is called Cages, and again, it's watchcages.com. Really great from what I understand. So um, uh, that's all for me, so I'll turn it back to Lisa to um, introduce Ben. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. That was sweet of you to uh, to um, acknowledge my hard work. It has been a lot of work, and most of Lewis's team is just on a volunteer basis, um, and we do volunteer a lot of our time as well. Um, but it is um, hands-on. He's a great person to work for. He's very genuine, very big heart, and um, very forgiving if you make mistakes. It's all about living and learning, you know? So that's what we're all hands on living and learning and fixing our mistakes as we go. And a lot of people like that because it makes it more real to them. It's not so much like a CNN news broadcast. You know, he's also touching on different types of news that um, the regular mainstream media would not even touch. Um, and things like human trafficking, you know, and watchcages.com. That's a great um, follow up if you watch Sound of Freedom. It's a great follow-up. It actually presents even more material and hits closer to home um, right here in Arizona, just how bad it is. And it is um, it is an amazing documentary, um, but it also um, provides a silver lining. It's not something that's gonna scare people. You know, it's gonna just put some truth out there um, and make bring an awareness that's much needed right now to that type of subject. So, um, on a happier note, <laughs> we are so honored to have with us today, Ben Symes. And uh, Ben is actually the world's leading practitioner in a Pyridim technology. And Pyridim is actually for um, sound healing. Okay, I like to say healing because it is healing. You know, some people are scared of that word healing, but that's what it's doing. It's, you know, I feel in my words, my opinion, okay, it is sound healing. Um, so let me read a little bit about Ben here. 
Um, following a series of synchronistic events after acquiring his first paradigm instrument in early 2015, Ben's time shifted his attention toward the profound effect that sound and vibration hold upon the human body. Reaching of his relationship with music and sound, Ben integrated his background in audio engineering with his undying curiosity for spiritual and metaphysical affairs, and now dedicates his time to promoting a greater understanding of frequency, medicine, and spiritual evolution. Finding himself as the world's leading practitioner and a natural spokesperson for paradigm technology, Ben feels that the real work has only just begun. So let's let's welcome Ben here. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Lisa. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Hello everyone. Ben. Thanks for having me on today. It's an honor to be asked. Well, thank you, and it's our pleasure to have you on with us today. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. Yes, that that was quite a quite a mighty intro you gave me there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a mighty person, so <laughs> it fits well, perfectly. Well, let me just say um, first and foremost, um, the moniker of being the world's leading paradigm practitioner. It's a, a it's a very um, nice grand title and one that was um, adorned to me by the inventor of the instrument, August Worley. Um, but I will say that um, at this stage, the technology is still resurfacing in this world. And I use that word resurfacing because I believe that this is a forgotten technology that is coming back to the planet now. And sometimes being the premier practitioner can be a lonely place because um, I, I would say I'm the most visible of the paradigm practitioners because of the um, synchronistic events I had leading up to it and following it. I kind of um, fell into a semi trance state for about a month after receiving the name of the instrument during dream time and I had no previous experience of um, web design. I had a little background in Photoshop so I, I knew the basics of design but I stumbled my way through creating the Yara Formation website and um, I would like to say that the energy was um, somewhat channeled because it was flowing through me um, very directly. And I was literally obsessed with building this website. And people even said to me, why are you building a website? Do people still use websites? You know, this is this was, I guess, just coming out of um, uh, what was that thing called? Uh, MySpace and into Facebook and everyone was like, oh, it's kind of dated, but I just felt this urge to build it. So I think that from having the website, which was re really, it's like um, a blog website, as a friend of mine just noted, because I threw all the information that was coming through to me through my research and what I was picking up on to help me understand um, the process that I was in with my own um, path towards um, self-discovery. So a lot of the information on there is really a, a document of my journey and that's why I think that the the website is valuable to anyone who is interested in learning more about um, energy and frequency medicine because it's ever expanding. Um, there's always new things being added there. There is a lot of information. Other people have said to me, it's almost like a mystery school. You know, you have to dig around and find this page and find that page. And, and there's a, a lot of info and the info is ever changing as my consciousness evolves. And I think that that is an important um, aspect of um, spiritual evolution because uh, the more that we know, the more questions we have. And to quote, quote the late, great Ishtak Bentov, um, he, he, he said, I, I, um, something like I gauge my intelligence by my current level of ignorance, <laughs> meaning that the more you know, the more you realize that you don't know. Don't know. So. Um, so yeah, yes, yeah, that, that's that, that that's my explanation of, you know, being the uh, 
leading paradigm practitioner. <laughs> That's awesome. Are... So actually, go ahead. No, 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 no. Well, actually, so Ben and I actually are just, we met on Facebook. So we never met in person. Um, we met through August Worley, really, as a friendship, as a connection, I believe, on Facebook. I met August uh -huh. in uh, Canada several years ago, and he's the creator of um, the Paradigm. Uh, he was up there for the Tesla Electric Festival, and I tried the Paradigm for the first time up there. Um, and then we became Facebook friends after that. And then, you know, with my interest in pyramid energy, we just stayed in contact for all those years. And then I connected with Ben. So it's amazing the different connections that you can get through technology now, like your remote healing sessions. You know, you can reach people around the world from your own home. You know, it's amazing. Yes. And, and, and you know, I think that technology, technology tends to get a bad rap in this day and age because, you know, there's a lot of highlighting of the negative aspects to it. But again, when we shift our perception towards that, I, I mean, technology is here. It's not going to go away. So we either embrace it and use it for good or, you know, we stand crying about it. I mean, for me, Facebook has been wonderful. The algorithms of Facebook are what led me to Paradigm. That's how I met really? Paradigm. Yeah, through at, at the time in 2012, I was doing a lot of research into um, pyramidal technology, especially ancient Mayan pyramids. And, um, and again, you know, the algorithms picked up on that. And one day I opened the computer and this funny little ad, I don't even know if it was an ad. I don't think it was because August has never actually run any ads for Paradigm. And it popped up and I saw the device and it resonated with me at a very deep level. And for months after that, I couldn't shut up talking about it. And I was telling everyone, hey, I've seen this device. I actually had the money to buy it at the time, but I was coming and going from Mexico, sort of filling myself up spiritually in a bit of a transitional point. Didn't really know which way to turn. And I, I, I read up on it and it's OK. You know, it's a chakra aligned analog um, sound healing device. and. Again, I thought, okay, well, what am I going to do with that? You know, am I trying to be a, a sound practitioner? Am I trying to be a, a, a medic in, in that sense? And I didn't see that in myself, even though I could see a small sparkle of it. It resonated, but my conscious mind, the ego mind, was kind of like, well, who do you think you are to be going out there doing that, doing that? So I just kept it sort of, you know, on a back burner as best I could, but it was burning, you know, hot. And I kept telling all my friends. And then when I got with my current partner, Dee Dee, I told her about it and she just turned to me and said, well, you want to go halves on it? Let's get it. And I was like, wow, you're as crazy as I am. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to drop, you know, the best part of $5,000 on a device that we've never even heard. We don't really have any idea of what we'll do with it but um hey yeah let's go and then it showed up in the box some months later and um as soon as i plugged it in the world changed really it literally does though it changes it's resonating at a frequency you can just leave it playing all day long right i yes. heard stories that some uh yeah. doctor's office there was a doctor's office actually that had it right in there and um people in the uh waiting room would fall asleep you know, when they were, and they weren't even out there very long, but they were just so relaxed. They didn't realize that this was playing. Yes. It was in another room, but it was resonating into the waiting room as well. And it would just make them so relaxed and they would fall asleep. Yes, it, 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 it is very comforting. And one thing that we've noticed um, reports that have come back from so many people and myself included is it's a familiar sound. When I first turned it on, I felt like I knew the energetic signature. Um, of the device and we actually have two now we have one in the bedroom and one in the lounge and they're both running 24 7 and it's it's not like we notice them anymore they're low level but when you turn one off yeah. it's like did somebody yeah. leave there's there's a strange <laughs> and many people have have noted that like they come in they don't even notice it but then you know when it cuts off it's like what just shifted and um Yes, it's it's a very interesting device, and it does carry its own energetic signature, and um, appears through our eight years of working with it in multiple environments. It does appear 
to provide significant shifts in perception and that can be at you know various levels or not but yeah most most people um come away feeling some kind of change and we've we've had many that have had complete um epiphanies um perceptually and really sort of shifted their direction in life and understanding of life and and i think that is the the real value of this instrument like um like everything outside of ourselves it leads us back to ourselves in, in yeah. inside and much as i love the device i i tend not to glorify too much of what is outside and and again this is technology you know if we look at if we look at cell phone technology you know we can pick the phone up and see someone in hong kong or have a conversation with somebody in australia and and again i think that that technology is just reflecting the aspects back of our inner self we we know about remote viewing we know about telepathy it's it's like and as they say there's nothing that we can create outside of ourselves that doesn't exist within so and and yeah. and with the, with with all the esoteric um wisdom teachings i i think the thing that is um that runs through them all is the aspect of know thyself and i think that that is is um the the biggest benefit that working with paradigm has has given me is that aspect of know thyself and oh gosh yes i i believe it um you know we're all frequency we're all frequency yes. beings first and foremost but we're bombarded with so many frequencies around us it's actually lowering and hindering our true powerful frequency you know so that's what it, paradigm yes. it really draws you back to that original pure frequency that you really are it, it allows you to power up right yes abs absolutely and and i feel that it brings us into um a greater alignment which is why we called our sessions harmonic alignment sessions because i feel i i look at um the human vehicle like um like a car you know if the wheels are out of alignment then we have a bumpy journey and we're less energy efficient and the same with the seven major chakras if they're out of alignment then you know we get those that are overworking overcompensating under uh, compensating and when they're when we can bring those wills um into alignment then the universal energy um is able to flow more freely through us and we can operate with um greater ease and grace in life um and towards the aspect of the the frequencies again when we're in when we're in greater alignment um it boosts our uh physical immune system and also our energetic immune system um right. because we are capable of combating the electromagnetic frequencies that um, we all live in. I mean, I live in New York City, you know, and coming back here when I've been to Mexico or out west, it's like walking into a microwave oven oh. and and yeah. you, 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 you do feel it, you know, I mean, thankfully, you know, we, we have the sacred space of our home with two paradigms, which sure. keep keep the area pretty clean because it has been doused out, I think, to about at least 30 feet each side of the um paradigm so it creates a um toridial that's a big um, field yes it is a big yeah 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 again i think august doused it and and it was about 30 feet each side i could be wrong on that but it's no wow. it's not less yeah so now, can you explain oh sorry go ahead charlie no i was just gonna ask let's say i do I have to live in New York City to be able to get a session from you, or can I do that remotely? No, we do offer them online. Um, we have been paused on that a little bit because uh, I was just taking some time away to appease myself with nature. And, you know, the summer's here. I really like to get out and do some forest bathing and grounding. So I've been a little slack with the online stuff. Um, during mm -hmm. COVID, we were doing... Um, uh saturday morning broadcasts on facebook live 
and we are about to relaunch the online sessions which is oh, a, a, a dial up through using a format uh, a format like this where the the audio carries well and mm -hmm. you know i'll sit one to one with yourself or uh, you know the participant and we have some light conversation get to know each other a little better you know it helps if i have some understanding of what somebody's looking for from the session and then i can um douse it out with the pendulum remotely to see what areas um, i need to concentrate on and then we set the intention we do the clearing we're there together and and working on the principle of distant reiki because everything's quantum so the energy you know we are we are affecting it and then there's a recording and um a post conversation to follow up on that because often what we find with the sessions is things do shift and a person's perception from before they have the session and after the session often things have shifted a little bit and the again the importance of that energetic exchange that human exchange to me is um the essence of everything because that's that's where the 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 magic can happen you, you know like um it just in a uh, like conversation to to follow it at the end you know something i may say um intuitively may trigger or unlock or answer something that's arisen during the session so um and that's something that i've just come to learn through working with the device and working in group environments and one-on-one -on -one sessions for eight years because i, I use that time to verify the claims of the device even though i was a believer um i like to be sure of things before i kind of bring them out and offer them i don't wish to offer something that i'm not a hundred percent on and that's really what this eight years have been about is um verifying what this device does through sure you know, empirical testing in a sense, you could say, you know, it's collecting data. We do so many meditations, so many personal sessions, you get the same feedback with with no prompting and it's like, okay, there, there appears to be um, something at work here. Much of it we still don't understand, right. um, <laughs> but um, if it works, it works, That's right. you know? I don't understand how my car works, but I know when I get in it and turn yeah. the ignition and put it in gear, it, it goes somewhere. So, so long as it keeps doing that, <laughs> I'm good. That's good. Yeah. Well, I put the picture up, the picture up. I just wanted to show everybody what oh. the paradigm actually looks like. And maybe you can give a, a breakdown a little bit of exactly what it's doing, like what it's, yes, what it's made it of. Well, it, it, it's built as a scale ratio of the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's a 52 degree pyramid um it employs aspects of uh biogeometry within it um it has a selenite wand which runs vertically through it and that touches on the brazilian quartz uh crystal capstone beneath the selenite wand it has the uh reiki symbol for place power here so um it can be used to amplify intention and to use uh, frequency as a carrier wave for intention, which is again, back to the principle of distant Reiki, you're just moving energy through and focusing um, where that energy uh, arrives. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sonically, it is um, tuned using a scale mathematically proportional to the human body it's not a musical scale and that's one difference with a sound device and a music device because a music device works with musical notes this works with sound and when working with sound and not music um mm. the predictive hemisphere our left brain hemisphere uh, when listening to music, it, it's the aspect of judgment. Oh, oh, you know, do I like this pad coming in? Do I like this sound? Do I like that sound? Oh, is that crash symbol going to happen again? 
yeah, you know, it's the analytical aspect that is still working. Whereas when listening to sound, it's much like lying at the beach or taking a walk through the forest. We don't judge the sound that the birds are making or that the ocean is making. So the left hemisphere tends to tone down a bit, which gives space to our intuitive right brain. Um, and this is how the aspects of intuition and shifts in perception can come into effect. Now, how it does that is through generating <coughs> um, seven low frequency tones. Each, each um, tone it, uh, corresponds with the um, seven major chakras. The root chakra is 32 hertz. And then it goes up to 36, to 40, to 42, to 45, and all the way up, I think, to 60 or 70 um, in the crown. So what it's doing essentially is stimulating um, emotion through the use of sound. And it's <clears throat> a very subtle way of working with the energetics of the body because again it kind of it tricks the the uh left brain hemisphere which is like our century that's our ego mind that's predominantly our conscious mind um when we're operating in the brain state of beta and it dips us down into the th well in through the alpha into the theta and then verges on the delta brain state, which is where we go when when we're in deep sleep. Um, and that's really where we're, our conscious mind is out of the way of our self. So it allows us to get out of our own way through um, the process of whole brain in, in, uh, integration. Um, also, what the low frequency sound does, it it resonates us at a core level. So if we think of it like um, a sonic massage, it's massaging us at a cellular level and through stimulating emotion, which is where um, we store a lot of negative um, energy. And by negative, I don't mean bad, like there's something wrong with it. I mean, it's stagnant. Our body is uh, comprises of energy, as, as we know. And when we hold on to things, and again, this tails back to what I was saying about the shifts in perception. Like if, if, if I'm holding on to a bad feeling that I have about a situation or a person, even in my deepest subconscious level it could have been something from 30 years ago but if i'm still holding a grudge on that it's like i'm holding on to energy which is not allowing it's taking up space and that space is required for universal energy to flow because as frequency beings we are designed to flow like a river so if we think of it in that sense it's like my little conscious beaver mind has built this dam here and now the 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 flow of the universal the chi the prana whatever we wish to call it has become restricted and that impacts the um, efficiency level of the seven major chakra centers, which are really energetic distribution centers. So um, as we work through the um, layers of the chakras and unlike Reiki, the paradigm works from the root chakra to the crown. And this is something, as I'm sure you know, that, that pyramids, the structure of a pyramid does. It sums the earth energy and, and brings it through, purifies it to send it out of the top, which is a, another interesting aspect um, I find with, with paradigm. It, I, I think it um, corresponds more towards the um, Koyopa or the Kundalini energy that... Um, that runs through us so it, it awakens and again traditionally i like to spend longer in the root chakra less time in the sacral and as i work up it, it's it's a pyramid so i i always feel most comfortable 
building the structure in the root. Um, and so the way it does, the way it creates sound, it is analog, it's not digital. Um, no one session can ever be reproduced. Um, it's, it's very much like the ocean. It, it often sounds the same, but the structure of the waves, the timing of them, the fizzles, the bubbles, it, it, it's always different and it really tends to go where it needs to. So many times in group sessions, I've at the end of the session, I've kind of hung my head like, wow, that was really rough in the throat, which the throat is notoriously um, uh, robust. Whenever we get in there, the, the device starts most often starts swirling around. It's like riding, riding a, a little bit of a rodeo. And that's very interesting um, from the aspect that I think um, collectively in humanity today, there is an issue, for lack of a better word, with people speaking their truth expressing themselves and not only expressing themselves but that expression being in alignment with what we're often feeling many people often express themselves in very outward ways but if that expression is not true to how you're feeling then um it, it, it needs it creates uh, the roadblocks or the dam that you're yes talking about. yes and and i think that that is why the throat is is the way it is um collectively but as i was saying i've hung my head at the end of sessions kind of in shame like wow i really you know that was too intense and then we go around the room in the group meditation setting and we always have a sharing at the end of the session and you know people have said man you know i came in here with such a such a migraine headache and when it got to the blue chakra you know it, that energy just just went away and somebody says yeah me too me too so here's me again the ego mind thinking that i know what's best for everyone in the room and again this is much like reiki you know when you apply reiki it's to remove yourself from the picture and just allow that universal chi key to run through you because who are you to think that you know what is best for that person's higher self and and healing so um it's a great teacher you know it, it certainly yeah. um, teaches it's taught me and repeatedly still teaching me to um get out of my own way yeah but that's well, that, 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 yeah and that's kind of what it does it does a lot more you, you know there's a lot more technical aspects about modulation and oscillation and but um I'll, I'll well, i know august um just talking to him and learning about the device from him mm -hmm. he actually used to work for robert or bob moog the bob moog creator yes of Yes. Moog synthesizers or the yes. Moog, Moog synthesizers. Yeah. So it, yeah. it has a powerful synthesizing capability. It just like, it just resonates. I mean, you can just feel it. And we're going to experience this today because Ben's going to actually um, allow us to have our own energy transformation with the paradigm today. And it's about 20 minute session. Yeah. 20, believe, 20 minutes is good. And you'll hear it from the different levels like you said you're going to start at the root chakra and you'll hear it change when it goes to the different chakras right yes yes and and the key to getting the most from the session is um just follow the sound allow it to take you wherever it will um don't judge it just observe anything that comes up um it is an unusual sound it may trigger things, it may not. If, if um, anything uh, uncomfortable arises in either physically in your body or emotionally or psychologically, um, there's no cause for concern. It's just stagnant energy loosening and making its way through your system. So the key to it is just become more conscious of your breath, breathe in light, and exhale love because it's just allowing it's like sweeping that log that's been at the side of the stream into the flow so it can go where it needs to yeah and our um, bodies are so used 
to the energies that we have been storing inside of us, the traumas we've been storing inside of us for so long, it'll try to fight to hold on to those. And yes. we want to utilize this time to release those traumas. So one thing that I always notice is if I hold a lot of tension in my jaw. Mm -hmm. So if you can just even focus on, you know, during the session, just releasing your jaw, opening your mouth slightly and releasing your jaw a little, that will, it kind yes. of opens the chakra, I think, in my head and just yes. lets everything flow. <laughs> yes, it, 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 you're quite right there, Lisa. It, it does, because when we, we sit with an open mouth and, or, and also the tongue to the roof of our mouth, um, it does have a, a physiological effect. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm famous for uh, yeah. <laughs> people are like, yeah, hey, you look, it doesn't matter what I look like, it's how I feel. You well, know. everybody pay attention to your feelings, your thoughts, your experiences yeah. during the session. And then we're going to have a Q&A afterwards and you can share your experiences with us as well. And if there is anything that you're looking to manifest in life or clear in life, just set that as your intention prior to the session. Um, once the session starts, don't try and focus on that because it, it's like it's like you, you've written the letter you put it in the envelope and you put it in the post box and then you wait for the postman to deliver. You don't have to think about the contents of the intention because the sound yeah. will act as the carrier wave and it will go to the highest order of um, what your consciousness needs. Yeah. And like um, we said, like you said earlier, you know, we're opening up those spaces for the energy that's supposed to be there. Those yes. traumas, psh, yes. let them go. Yes, and the traumas may not even be yours. They may be collective. They may come from past lives. I, I mean, I have so many wayward thoughts when I'm operating the device, and it's like, well, where's that from? You know, like, again, but I've learned don't pay attention to it. It may not be mine. I may be picking up on something else. It doesn't matter because it's all energy, and it's there's only one energy in the universe, and, you know, we're, yeah. we're, we're all built from it. So um, we, not me. And let me just touch real quick on that, because I like to mention this story all the time. There was actually a test um, performed a while ago with some rats or some mice. Mm -hmm. And every time the mice would experience the smell of um, cherry blossoms, they would be electrocuted. So these mice were terrified of the smell of cherry blossoms. The next generation of mice never were electrocuted once, but they were born and grained with that get that fear of the smell of cherry blossoms yes. so that's how it affects us our lineage our ancestors our family tree they all have energies that are ingrained in us when we we're born and we don't know how to deal with them because they're not ours you yes know? yeah absolutely and it even goes further than that because then we get into our galactic ancestry and much of what we're carrying is something that's been played out millennia ago with other civilizations these are the residues of it so yeah, it, oh, wow. gets, it, 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 it gets deep, but it's fun. Yeah. It's a great journey, <laughs> and we chose to be here to experience, learn, and evolve. So, exactly. Enjoy exactly. the moment. Well, this is awesome. We are blessed to have you with us today. So, uh, let's get on with the, he the healing session, and then we'll do the QA afterwards. It's going to be about 20 minutes long, everybody. What should we do during it? What do you request people do? Um, it's best to just be comfortable, lie down sit still however you want to be close your eyes still your mind and um just be open to whatever arises there's no right or wrong way to do this um you may drift off you may feel like you were asleep but you weren't quite asleep you may be electrified you may um you may feel very little you know it, it's relaxing it can be energizing um the key is not to judge because we're always judging and we tend to judge ourselves the hardest so one of the hardest things to do is just don't judge just observe awesome. yeah. i would say that's the key so okay i'll switch over now i've just got to um go to my settings and switch over to um the paradigm okay. Awesome. Um, we'll give you a minute here to do that. Okay. <laughs> so 
it's going to be a much needed energy healing session. <laughs> Charlie, I yeah. saw that you and I commented in the live chat at the same exact message at the same time. Welcome, everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I type that twice? Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, yes. You can hear me, yes? Yes. yes. Yep. Perfect. So um, we are good to go then. So if you just, um, as I mentioned earlier, just uh, make yourself comfortable, still your mind. Um, if you do have an intention or a desired outcome for the session, set that in your mind and uh, allow the sound to take you where it will. Don't judge and enjoy the session. At the close of the session, there will be a few minutes silence. We like to call this the eighth chakra because this is the area for processing. If you think of um, the dust settling and often this is where the clarity and the epiphanies may come from. So enjoy and I shall see you on the other side.
Hello, everyone. We're just going to wait for Ben to come back on here. That was wonderful. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you could hear it. I saw the can't hear um, comment. And um, I, I guess think that... it was there was just a pause at the beginning. And I think Charlie couldn't hear it okay. before it started. Yeah, because I got going and then I saw that and I was like, oh my goodness, why is that? I and I, I started trying to troubleshoot everything. Like, why is it not oh, playing? No. But then I figured, no, that's all right. I, I, I figured it was okay from there. Yeah. yeah. I didn't see the message till we were like halfway through. Perfect. But Perfect. Yeah, that was awesome. It was like a, it was like, it reminded me of a roller coaster ride. Cause when we started at the root chakra, it really felt like you were on one of those old wooden roller coasters and it was just shaking the shit out of you, yes. you know, trying to help you release things. And then, you know, as it got, further up you could hear feel like your whole body just resonating with your heartbeat like your heartbeat through your whole body and then it felt like when it got up into my head like kind of like a washing machine that was off cycle yes. for a while yes and then it just smoothed out and it was at one point it felt like i was in a huge just a huge empty room that was like in the solar plexus heart area i think just like mm -hmm. a huge empty room it was it was weird so many different sensations but i'd feel so great you know yeah. i had a pain in my neck and it is like not there now <laughs> yeah it, it it's quite funny like that i mean we often hear that you know that somebody had an ache or a pain and you know unrelated and it it, it just shifts but the washing ma machine thing that that's where it's kind of it, it's like a binaural aspect because of the way that the tones um, there's cutoff filters on them so they actually operate there's um, um, a degree of difference between the left and the right ear so mm -hmm. it, it does create a binaural effect and that that is what um, assists with the whole brain integration because now the two hemispheres are, are kind of balancing so um yeah very good observations and and yeah. every and every session is different every, everyone plays it different i mean this is what i know this is what's natural to me um i tend to stay lower in the dials um other operators will sweep kind of higher so it's woo, woo. you know occasionally i go there with longer sessions but i tend to um keep it in the the lower end for me it's like squeezing um a, a tube of toothpaste is the best way i can describe it because i push it from the bottom and rather than um uh disrupt the energy too much i try to sum it and squeeze it through the top but um it was amazing we have a lot of different comments that are saying the same thing you know that was amazing it was perfect another person that was amazing thank you i was relaxed all through um wonderful Sabine says, i got so relaxed snoozed off and slightly popped into consciousness at each frequency shift very restful i needed that thank you that's one thing i noticed too there was like these little rubber band twangs on occasion yeah then it was kind of like you were going deep in and then it kind of like reminded you that you have work to do and pay attention you know what i mean <laughs> yes something. yes I, I, again that's sweeping the dial and and it's the principle of consonance and dissonance which is something that i meant to cover earlier because um it's like where it stretches us out and it's a very good analogy you gave of the rubber band twanging because it, it stretches out and it's not comfortable you know yeah. it's kind of jarring 
but but then it comes back and much like um a physical massage you know if we have knots then we go there and it's not always a, a smooth pleasurable experience when mm. You know they've got their elbow in your shoulder or something yeah. it's like ah you know <laughs> so it, it does have that aspect because you know as we become discordant it, it's kind of stretching it but then it's allowing it, it it's stretching it out expanding it again so th those energy pockets have the space to move outward and then it's it's bringing it back so yeah. yes sometimes it, it is um uh discordant and uncomfortable and um i think that's one aspect of frequency medicine that um separates it somewhat because it's not it's not um it's not like hearing beautiful singing bowls all the time it's there's a there's an ugly side yeah. to it and for me that's the duality of existence it's the negative and the positive the yeah. the, the day and and the night and um important to recognize but yeah. it always I, leaves us in a better better place i have yeah. a, a big singing bowl and every time i play it there's always somebody that like oh that sound that's a horrible sound and i'm like that means you need to hear it even more so I, play it louder <laughs> yes <laughs> A absolutely you know when we first started with pyridine we had one of our friends and she said oh but why does it sound so rough why 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 isn't it nice why isn't it nice and it's like you know because you don't need nice obviously yeah. you know. I, that's exactly it i always tell people if you you know i do i i was doing intuitive design capstones and i'm always like i'll mm -hmm. probably make them with different colors and different crystals that you usually wouldn't resonate towards you yeah. might think it's ugly because of yeah. that you know yeah. but it's because of those are the energies that you need. If you constantly gravitate towards the things that you like in life, yes. you're never going to put yourself in that uncomfortable predicament to have the ability to change. Yes, you know? very well put. And that's one thing that I've learned in life is <laughs> the things that we may dislike the most or that trigger us the strongest are the areas that we probably need to look into the most and the strongest, yeah. you know? Yes. Um, if we want to do the work, if we don't want to do the work, then, you know, stay yeah. pretty, right? Well, let's see, I got into energy healing a long time ago and several years ago with Reiki healing. And I, I actually got out of it for the, one of that, one of those reasons, because people wanted to continue to come to me instead of doing the work. And I wanted to be a teacher to teach them that yeah. you can do this too, mm -hmm. you know, come to me, help me, let me release and open you up. But you know, there you go. It's on you. But I had too many people just wanted, they didn't want to do the work. They just wanted to keep coming to me. And I didn't like that. So <laughs> yeah, it, it, exactly. And that, and, and you know, that's one aspect that we, that we always like to talk about, you know, is what is healing and where does that come from? Because, you know, as a healer, you can facilitate the space for someone to heal, but ultimately it, it's on them whether they choose it and many people i think they say oh i need healing i'm going to this one i'm going to that one nothing seems to work it's because you want saving you don't yeah. want healing exactly. and healing there's work required in it and again it's like anything in life we, we're responsible for ourselves and it's yeah. not always pretty and you know it, well, look it, at our society everything that they do it's to numb the pain, drinking, yes. yeah. smoking, um, taking medication from the doctor because of your depression, the yes. feelings and the emotions and the traumas in your life are there for a reason. You're supposed to feel them. You're supposed yes. to experience that pain and you're supposed to learn how to release it and drudge through that. Yeah. And once you realize how to do that, life is totally different. It's like kind of watching a television show. You know, yes. and you're just going yeah. with the flow. <laughs> yeah, and it's reflective. You know, it shows us the areas that that we need to look at if we pay attention. Yeah. But that's the aspect many people would rather, you know, um, have the distraction than yeah. pay attention to themselves. How about you, Charlie? What did you experience? Well, I was kind of like uh, Sabine. I was, I was almost sleeping. I was so peaceful, and. Uh, until the last tone and then i started to feel a lot of stuff going on up here 
Uh, and I figured that was the, uh, you know, the, the, the crown chakra or probably that we were working on there. So uh, mm-hmm. I did have a couple of questions. How did, um, or could you describe how these sounds or tones were, were, were uh, discovered or how you, you, you come about, you know, you, yes. are they based upon three, six, nine or solfeggio frequencies or, you know, just how do you, how does that come about? Um, I mean, that would be a question best answered by the um, inventor, the yeah. creator of the device, August. But the way that the device came about itself was following a, a deep transcendental meditation session with the late great channel, El Marilla Bailey. Um, August himself encountered um, an energetic being that communicated through sound, color, light and shape. And the tone that he heard and that he actually heard for about two weeks following the meditation session was the tone of Pyridyne, um, the ones that you've just heard. And Mm -hmm. as an analog synth designer, after a few days, it began to dawn to him, well, you know what, I could actually create that tone that I was hearing. And then he got what he calls the cosmic tap on the shoulder that said, yes, you could. And that's what you should do. So then he began work uh, upon the device. Now, how he actually um, came to those tones, like I say, he, he used a scale which is in mathematical proportion to the human scale. Okay. Um, the true depth of that and like the 369 Fibonacci aspects, that would be something that we'd have to ask August because okay. although I believe he has explained it to me probably on a number of, um, <laughs> a number of times, it, it still eludes me. Like I say, I don't always understand how the car works. <laughs> okay. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Hmm, that's really awesome. Um, we would love to have you back on for another session next time if you want if you want any any time i would love to it's been it great conversation very Everybody's good exchange enjoying it. well yeah. there's um sabine wants to know when the next session in person will be in new york yes uh sabine we're still working on that but i will contact you because we do have a couple of um private things that we're going to be doing we have we ben- st- still haven't found our, our home yet in new york we're always bounce, oh, no. bouncing around. It stops, it starts, it stops, it starts. It's it's funny. Yeah. You know, just when you think you've got momentum, then somebody falls out and, you know, it doesn't I think happen. now's the time, though. I think right now is yes. the time for awareness. Everyone's awareness is turning to natural healing modalities because they they can see. Their eyes have been open to the sick care industry. And, yeah. you know, there's bigger things and better things out there. And I really yes. feel like now's the time you know, yes. for you to shine. Thank you. Yes, I think that the, the Western system is showing its um, faults to the fullest at the moment, and people are looking for alternative uh, medicines. I I got my Medic- I, a, a Medicare marketing material from my insurer today, and they're uh-huh. willing to pay me 25 bucks to go get a physical, 25 bucks to go get a colon exam, and I yeah. forgot 10 bucks for something else, but Nothing for sound healing. I wonder why. Because no. it works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No acupuncture. <laughs> no. Yeah. Ben, why don't you, um, before we go, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about um, how they can get a hold of you, your website, you know, and uh, about the upcoming Paradigm Summit. Okay. Yes. Um, you can reach me through Yara Formation, which is Y A R A H formation you can either go to org or you can go to facebook or instagram i'm not too savvy with instagram but facebook and the website you can subscribe email me there my direct email is peacemaker at yaraformation.org um any of those ways a great way to get in touch um we do have an upcoming paradigm summit 
which is taking place September 22, 23, 24, um, in a beautiful hilltop location just outside of Asheville, North Carolina. Um, again, details. Mm. Yes, details of that are on uh, the website. Well, they will soon be on the website. They're on the Pyridine website, which you can go to, pyridine.com. And we will be starting um, our marketing campaign for that. So uh, you'll see some online presence. Um, that's going to be um, a beautiful event where we, um, it'll be myself, uh, my partner, Didi Ceballos, uh, August Worley, um, Dale Allen Hoffman, and Britt Birkland, who is a massage therapist working out of um, North Carolina. And she's been using Pyridine now, I would say, probably for a couple of years as part of her practice. And um, she's a fascinating woman with lots to say about the way that Pyridium has enhanced her practice. There may also be an acupuncturist there who will be speaking along a similar line of how um, Pyridium has enhanced her modality. And it's a three-day event. It's on the hilltop, um, very laid back, relaxed affair. We'll be talking more in depth about our experiences and time spent with it. August will be taking the lid off um, some of the more scientific aspects, um, the aspects of resonance, biogeometry, physioacoustics, and a whole lot more. And there's also a live performance, um, a musical soul portrait, which I'm very interested to experience from Richard Shulman, who um, is an established uh, jazz musician and now dedicates his time towards working with healing music. And from what I understand, the musical soul portrait kind of um, encompasses the people in attendance and addresses them as a collective level, much as the same way Pyridime does in our group meditation. So uh, yeah. go to Pyridime.com, go to Yoroformation.com, Yoroformation. I, I, I added the link in there too. Ah, Augusta, wonderful. Augustara.com yes. slash Pyridime Summit. That has all the information for the summit and then your yarafoundation.org. I put both of those in the chat. Thank you. And also uh, the YouTube channel, Yara Formation, there's some meditations on there. Um, I've still yet to post the crown chakra, but there's the root to the third eye. Um, with yep. some... And all your social your social media links are in the descriptions of the video as well. If people Wonderful. Want to connect with you. Thank you. Well, yeah, you've got it then. I'm drifting off now with my right brain. <laughs> my right brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Did thank any you. Last Thoughts or anything, Charlie? Ben? I, I, I did have one last question. Earlier in the session, you mentioned how you spend proportionately more time on the lower chakras. And uh, I mean, I've had my chakras tested before and my higher functioning ones seem to be the, the upper ones as opposed to the lower ones. Is that normal or is there a normal in that? I mean, the thing is, Charlie, I, I don't really know. I wouldn't say there's a normal. Everyone everyone is different. And, you know, when talking about frequency, it, it's also important to keep in mind that everything shifts, you know, from one day to the next. Your, your, your root chakra may be, it could be a little wobbly one day and then the next day or the following week, it could feel more solid, you know. It could, it could be firmer you know um because because we do shift you know some days we're feeling more intellectual some days we're feeling like stronger in our will other days we're more grounded uh, again the key is to keep them in balance in balance right yeah i mean like everything in life it's it's like balance you know what really changes one day to the next but one day we're good and then the next day we're kind of struggling to remember everything that we've got to do sure you know yeah yeah okay all right just wondered if that had anything to do with the amount of time that you allocated to the lower chakras no i i just look at it because it's like a pyramid so you need more bricks in the bottom than you do in the oh, top yeah got it 
Got you it. know, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and like building a house, you need that foundation. For me, sure. it was just something that I, I, I intuitively came to me when I started to work mm -hmm. with Pyridim, and I've done mm -hmm. sessions where I've spent less time in in the root, and it feels topsy turvy. It doesn't feel stable. Okay. You know. It. Okay, but that answers my question. Thank there you go. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you everybody for being with us today and uh, we really appreciate it. We'll have Ben back soon and uh, it's been a pleasure, Ben. Thank you so much. Look forward. Thank you. Peace Thank you. and many blessings to you all. Okay. Thank you.